everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the virtual comedy show. You know, at this point, after I push this button, whoop, uh, Omicron is so contagious. How contagious of, is it? Ha-ha! <laughs> Omicron is so contagious, they're thinking of changing the name to the seven billionth digit of pi. <laughs> Back to show. Steve didn't understand that one. I didn't understand that one. <laughs> In a cabin going crazy Cause a flu that's worse than swine Swept the planet, so damn it Here we are in quarantine Hello and welcome to Virtual Comedy Show Here are some etiquette guidelines for Virtual Comedy Show Please arrive 15 minutes early Please be quiet, except for laughing We've been a Zoom meeting civilization for more than a year Come on, you know the drill, just be polite We would like to see your face as part of the audience Let's be social, not just distant So get comfortable, plan to laugh, but not heckle And let's make our semi-quarantined world a bit more normal for a little while Thanks, and enjoy the Virtual Comedy Show Hey everyone, it's time for the Virtual Comedy Show Starring Brad Tassel and Steve Goody! <coughs> Steve. Tonight, Brad and Steve welcome their very special guest, Moody McCarthy! Live from their respective vaccinated homes. And now, please welcome Brad Tessel! Oh! And the crowd <laughs> pretends! Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. So, Steve, you didn't get the joke Good about Steve. Them. Pi is endless digits after the Oh, uh, you see billion so, and, sounded billion sounded finite to me. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I know because there's seven billion people on the earth. So uh, that's everybody. After that, all right. Well, boy, that joke worked. <laughs> well, welcome to the virtual count. We have an incredible show. I can't believe it. We've got not only Carla Albrick, the darling of the music set. Can you believe Carla? Yeah. Fantastic. Just getting over the COVID herself, I think. We've also got from uh, Moody. Uh, did you say we worked together 20 years ago? Yeah, we bumped into each other somewhere in Indiana in the 1900s. <laughs> in the 1900s. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they right, by right after the Missouri Compact or whatever the hell that thing is. <laughs> so uh, we bumped in or we worked together? I think we bumped into each other. I think I oh. was tagging along with a friend, maybe um, uh, in um, it's Snickers. We're going way back. Would oh, that that's add way up? back. Cause, no, no, I, I, it couldn't have been 20 years ago because uh, he and I didn't get along for about 25 years. I only finally worked there the last couple of years he was open because we finally oh. got back together. It could have been somewhere oh. else. Or you thought else. it was somebody who had a career. That you met. I don't know. So somebody who so uh so Moody, uh wow, you know, you've you've been everywhere. You went to New York University and Georgetown. Uh, George Washington University. Oops, sorry oh, about George my camera. Wa there. Oh, yeah. well, then I you're went not to... on this show. Get rid of him, Steve. George Washington. That's not a school. I not from Syracuse, Georgetown. New York. So Georgetown uh, George, is like man, our, mute him. our rival. Mute him. Yeah, yeah. No, it's over. Mute him. George, not Georgetown. <laughs> so uh well, we have a fantastic show, and I hope you're still here after you hear what I've written. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, hello to everybody and Valerie. Let's all clap to have yeah, Valerie here. Yeah, She's on the bed. Yeah. Can't wait until she is healthy, healthy, and here every week. So, okay. Well, by yeah. the way, uh, for Elena, let's start. Uh, comedian Bob Saget passed away unexpectedly, really unexpectedly, in a hotel in Orlando after doing a two-hour show. I mean, that's mm. that's crazy. Uh, so far, I've been lucky. I've spent all my time dying right here. So that's the uh, by the way, Bob was loved by all. I can't think of anybody that knew him or didn't know him that didn't love uh, Bob. He was loved by the comedy community and millions of fans. His fans loved him for the wholesome dad character he played on Full House. And the comedy community loved him because he would rather talking about shoving things up the butts of his full house fans. <laughs> a lot of dirty humor. Had a lot of up the butt stuff. He enjoyed that. Okay. Eh, that was a little weirdly written. A little. Okay. A little. Eh, eh. I had a long day. Hey, Ted Cruz is everybody's favorite man. He went on Fox News to say the FBI was trying to incite violence on January 6th. And he said that Joe Biden need to fess up for his role. <laughs> uh, by the way, hey, folks, 
uh, Ted just doesn't look like Grandpa from the Munsters. He also <laughs> seems to be, you know, allergic to the garlic of knowing what government is about because <laughs> Joe Biden wasn't president on January 6th <laughs> last year. He wasn't president until January 20th. So unless Sleepy Joe was going to have an insurrection at the Edgar Hoover building, Jedgar Hoover building, <laughs> Trump was in charge. Uh, by the way, plus the investigations have already cleared the FBI from involvement, uh, mostly proved by the fact no one in the FBI owns truck testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a requirement to have been in the insurrection. Okay. Whoops, I took two pages off. That's not right. You've covered butts and okay. tentacles. Keep going. I know. I'm really wordy today, and it gets worse. Listen to how wordy and horrible this one is. Uh, popular anti-vax leader and right-wing darling Christopher Key, everybody friends with him, is urging his followers to use urine therapy to cure COVID. Who's seen that? Who's using it? He actually used the words, there's tons of research, so you know it's true, that uh, drinking urine is a cure for COVID given by God, no less. So is there a level of absurdity that these people will not swallow? I do, well, literally, <laughs> swallow. Uh, exactly what do these cult leaders have to recommend before these people will go, I think they're just screwing with me. I just, do you, do you think they're just screwing with them now? By the way, do you know the new cure for COVID? That is finger painting on your face with feces. Did you know that? <laughs> they call it a poop portrait. It's a poop portrait. And the COVID demons will steer clear of your house. <laughs> After that urine breath. And not only if you get sick, ain't no one coming around you anyway. It's a good infection's gone. By the way, I don't know what's in the vaccine, but my urine is just Diet Coke and Little Debbie Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Diet Coke and Little Debbie Cakes. So by the way, so what does a good Christian evangelical have to look forward to as far as the future of COVID cures to make sure that they don't have to take the devil's vaccine? Well, here they are. I have found them. Some of the new COVID cures coming up in 2022. The first COVID cure. In March, it will come out that three Red Bulls and a Kid Rock CD cures COVID. <laughs> Red Bulls and a Kid Rock CD. The second thing that will cure COVID around mid-July will find the miracle COVID cure Roundup Martinis. <laughs> comes comes with lung spots. <laughs> The third one in September will bring a message from Jesus about antifreeze enemas. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Oh. And the fourth cure for COVID, I'll have what Alex Jones's wife is having. <laughs> yeah, that made that made Moody leave. Okay. <laughs> Okay, next. Hey, now something totally different. The SAG Awards. Anybody in SAG? Moody, are you in SAG? I, I used to be. I was an AFTRA, and they merged You're with AFTRA. SAG. I was an AFTRA. I was the same. <laughs> the, the SAG Awards, to honor the best in film and television, have announced their nominees this year. Ted Lasso and Secession got the most TV nods. And the film Power of the Dog leads... In film nominations, the show will be live on TNT and TBS February 27th to make sure no one knows who won. Because <laughs> nobody watches those. Yeah, come on. Oh, heavens. Hey, 203 GOP House members voted against the voting rights bill, you know, uh, because they know if everyone is able to vote, They'll vote correct, but never right. <laughs> scathing, scathing. <laughs> oh, heaven. Hey, a woman in China. Here's something from China. Have you heard this? A woman in China is posting of her plight on social media as she is forced to quarantine with a blind date. 
after <laughs> Chinese officials. She's at a blind date's house after Chinese officials instituted an immediate COVID lockdown in the area right in the middle of dinner at the man's house. Wow. Uh, Mrs. Wang, Miss Wang is her name. And as of day five, she posted the pairing is not going very well <laughs> as, his, as his food is very bland and he rarely has ever spoken to her. The biggest surprise of the story, who knew Bobby Flay had an apartment in China? <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Bobby Flay. Okay. <laughs> Rudy, I live in New York, do you? I do, yes. You know Bobby Flay, isn't he there? Is he? I, you know, I'm the... My wife is the restaurant, the foodie in the house. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with the Diet Cokes and the, um, the little Debbie and the little cakes. Debbie cakes. Me too, baby. Yeah. Me too. I actually, yeah, I actually have a joke about that. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do it now or wait till it's set? Fish. Well, don't okay, turn to set. Yeah. <laughs> wait till it's set. Fish. Okay. Well, good because I'm killing it, boy. You want to slow that down? Uh, <laughs> the Queen has stripped Prince Andrew of his military titles. And royal patronages. Have we seen that? Yeah. So he is no longer able to use his royal highness. But his most high perverted sicko is still on the table. <laughs> <laughs> He's gross. Okay. Oh, here's fun. A man in Maryland, you've all seen this, a man in Maryland has received the first pig heart transplant. Is that amazing? Uh, it is so cool. He is, he is said to be awake, alert, and talking to spiders. <laughs> uh, I get that one. I get that one. Steve gets a joke. The first one of the 89 shows we've done. Okay. Oh, hey, I've got like three more is all. I hope that's okay. Uh, a salon in Cambridge, Ohio. Ohio. Oh, Ohio. A salon in Cambridge, Ohio has broken the Guinness World Record with a hairball that weighs over 225 pounds. Wow. I know. Cambridge, Ohio. It took two years to collect and said by locals to be the equivalent of 3,200 mullets. <laughs> <laughs> One big chance. It's, it's Ohio, everybody. All right. Two more. Okay. Hey, uh, then we'll be able to get that. <laughs> Donald Trump hung up on NPR host Steve Inskeep. Did y'all listen to that seven-minute interview? After he kept fact-checking the defeated former president. Trump later said, Inskeep is a loser. I bet he won't even drink his own pee. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bad callback. <laughs> and last, before we actually have a show, in India, a hog deer, a hog deer was recaptured after escaping its enclosure. The animal is named a hog deer because it ducks under obstacles rather than jumping over them like a normal deer. Now, this is not to be confused with the Giuliani deer who just bombards obstacles with lies. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, many get confused and feel like the hog deer is actually the result of a hog and a deer mating, but that is false. <laughs> That is false because a doe needs a buck to pork. Uh, oh, 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 hit the drum. Rim shot. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Buck to pork. By the way, let me say this. Hey, helping me, helping me this week with some of these jokes, uh, Danny Browning, if you know comedian Danny Browning, he helped me with the ones that worked. Hey. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brad Tassel. This is the Virtual Comedy Show. Bring yourself in, Steve. Bring yourself in. Steve is ready. We're all ready. How excited are you? Let's hear it for Brad Tassel and Danny Brown. Hey, Brad. And Danny Browning. Good job, Danny. All Thanks, right. Brad. Thank you, Brad. It is time, as usual, for a top 10 list. So let's run the top 10 list music video. Ready, ready.
That's right, and tonight's category is very exciting. Top 10 questions that deserve answers in 2022. You know, the past two years, we've had all sorts of questions that are not getting answers, and 2022 promises to be just as much of a mess. These are the top 10 questions that deserve answers in 2022. Number 10, drinking pee, really? <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Number nine. Hey, that reminds me. Why do so many people have so much trouble believing that this crap isn't butter? <laughs> Number eight. Hey, that reminds me. Can people with peanut allergies safely watch Charlie Brown specials? <laughs> <laughs> I want answers. <laughs> Number seven. Hey, that reminds me. Can I ever eat in an indoor restaurant again? <laughs> okay. I bet you no. can. Guessing that's a no from your abject silence. All right. <laughs> Number six. Hey, that reminds me. If ducklings come from a duck, where do dumplings come from? <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 <laughs> questions that deserve answers in 2022. Number five. Seriously, are they really drinking pee? <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> Number four. Hey, that reminds me. Can we please fire Marsha Blackburn already? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. It's a very hot and cold list. Number three. <laughs> Can Lauren Bobert get her Walmart job back? Yes, please. Number two. Please! <laughs> Man, Kevin, you were way ahead of me on that one. <laughs> the number one question that deserves an answer in 2022. Why is cottage cheese called cottage cheese? Was it invented in a cottage? Is it made of building materials? And why is Seinfeld still writing these jokes? And why does Sean Hannity still have a job and Chris Cuomo doesn't? And why does Marjorie Taylor Greene have a job and Al Franken doesn't? And why is Mitch McConnell alive and Betty White and Sidney Poitier and Bob Saget are dead? And can Darwin please get started on QAnon voters, please? That's a lot of questions for a question. Well. I Actually, say. Darwin is doing quite well with QAnon voters. It's called COVID. <laughs> yeah, but COVID's milder now. I don't trust it. Yeah, I know. Now they're just getting really sick. So, but that was sick. Come on, everybody. Clap for Steve Goody. Hey, Steve, Steve. Steve. That was very good. Patty Vasquez is not going to join us later, but now I can't believe what you're going to bring up. I think you should bring her so up. Excited. Let's start. It's our musical guest. Our musical guest. It's our musical guest. Our musical guest. Well, I'm gonna sing something funny and then Steve will play something in between. Our musical guest. Well, right. Our musical guest. Right. It's time for our musical guest. Carla Albrecht. Carla. Key of F. Right. Wow. Wait, that was in the key of F. Was it? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Weird. You win hey. a hard copy of that top 10 list. <laughs> wow. Ah, so um, people ask me because I sing songs about relationships and stuff. They ask me sometimes, hey, have you ever written, had someone write a song for you? And uh, at, that did happen once. I uh, had a guy tell me that he wrote a song for me. I, I was really excited and flattered until I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a totally average woman. <laughs> Stands about five foot three. I've got a totally average woman. Weighs about 153. <laughs> I don't think we really needed to share that. <laughs> She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically mean. <laughs> you know, average. When she walks down the street, some people notice, some don't. <laughs> when she walks down the street, some people notice, but in general, most people don't. Some guys will whistle, twice as many won't. <laughs> she can make a blind man hear. <laughs> 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 Make a deaf man see. 
<laughs> she could have any guy who is no better or worse than me. I've got a totally average woman. <laughs> IQ of a hundred. <laughs> She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically mean. <laughs> Every night she beats me. Oh Lord, she beats me so bad. She took a dark turn, didn't it? <laughs> Every night she beats me. Oh Lord, how she beats me so bad. She's the toughest Scrabble partner I have ever had. Hi. She can let a sleeping dog lie. <laughs> Send a dead man to his grave. I gotta go on. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye, Valerie. We love you. <laughs> when she was a young child, she would occasionally misbehave. I've got a totally average woman. Stands about five foot three point seven. <laughs> She's a mean, mean woman. Statistically mean. Maybe I would walk over room temperature gold. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. Wow, I even got a Bob. I even got a Bob Saget moment there with the, uh, you know, hey, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly that was, what it was. No, I really love about that song is that the woman is totally average except in Scrabble. She's way above average. Yeah. She's way above average in Scrabble. Or, or the dude is way below. <laughs> That's true. All right, maybe she's average. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, as you know, as we do on this show every week, our musical guest sings a song, and then I have to come up with a song without knowing what Carla was just was about to sing, something from my repertoire that has something to do with what she sang. So, uh, first of all, I think reverb is called for. Wow. <laughs> Your song was about uh, relationships, love, and Valentine's Day is coming up, so here's something I wrote. Love me on Tinder. <laughs> I don't have all night. And you're within 100 feet. So swipe me to the right. Love me on Tinder. Swipe me through. Say my dreams are real. You have a smoking profile pic. <laughs> and darling, I'd like to cop a fee. Bathroom <laughs> <laughs> selfie, 3 a.m. Boy, I sure look fine. Thank you very much. You never know. I'm three foot ten. <laughs> that my hair ain't mine. <laughs> love me on Tinder. Love me fast. I love this effing app. <laughs> I've got two more after you. Hope no one's got the measles <laughs> love me on tinder hey you'll do <laughs> your name sure i'd like to know <laughs> why not we'll be done in just a few i don't actually love you so well bless my soul you look so good and you're right here in my neighborhood you like my smile and I like your butt. It ain't love, but let's hook up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, let's hook up. Well, this one's a honey, this one's a hoe. It's three in the morning, let's go. I ain't nothing but a horn dog. Scrounging all the time. I ain't never had a woman except the skanks I find online. <laughs> ah. Well, thank you, thank, thank you very much. Oh. Thank you very much. Yeah! Woo. Fantastic. Boy, thanks. And now back I'm to our... I'm taking you out. Okay. I most enjoyed the attempt 
to make Tinder a G-rated song <laughs> yeah. on the fly. That they're really like just, <laughs> that's just something really camp. special about that. <laughs> no one has the measles. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna stay on that topic, then I've got something that I wrote for a friend's wedding. He asked me to to do a song for his wedding, and then I I think he 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 went. I mean, uh, reception, because <laughs> he realized it was me. Okay. <laughs> My love is warmer than a, a day in Alaska, <laughs> softer than a coconut, <laughs> deeper than the thoughts of a supermodel, deeper than a wide mouth bass. My love is brighter than a solar eclipse, which happens every 54 years. My love is so much better than a sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> Something happened to my love the day that I met you. Something that I've never felt before. And all the time I felt this way, I've come to realize there's nothing that antacid wouldn't cure. <laughs> my love is warmer than a bowl of vichyssois. <laughs> Softer than the finest sandpaper. Deeper than a big gulp from 7-Eleven. Wider than the eye of a needle. <laughs> My love is brighter than the brightest star in a distant galaxy. <laughs> there is nothing in this world that could ever change my love. Unless I win the lottery. <laughs> Once I thought that love was meant for anyone else but me. Once I thought you'd never come my way. Words cannot express the feelings that I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> My love is warmer than the little kid's swimming pool. Uh -oh. <laughs> Softer than a hypodermic needle. Deeper than the little kid's swimming pool. Wider than your mom. <laughs> my, my love is brighter than your keychain flashlight. Which, by the way, needs a battery. <laughs> you are my one and only till something better comes along. <laughs> Very romantical. <laughs> Yay! That was awesome. Carla Albrecht, everybody! Carla Albrecht. Thank you, thank you, hey, thank you. Hey, by the way, Carla has a new album coming out March 1st. That's right. Hey. Guess who bought it? How does everyone today? get that? What? Uh, Guess who bought a copy today? Oh, Steve, thank you. Uh, just go CarlaU.com and all the info is there. C-A-R-L-A-U.com. You can pre-order it. Yeah. I will be there after this show. What's up, uh, boss? If enough people donate to this show to make it worth it. So, <laughs> uh, so skip the middle, man. Buy a CD. That's right. Skip the middle, man. Buy it. Wait a minute. Oh, skip the middle, man. <laughs> you an idiot. Steve just screwed up the whole show. I, I certainly did. It. Hey, that's what I do. <laughs> All right, Carla. Hey, now, Carla, that was amazing. Now, by the way, we have a first for this show, Steve. It's a headliner that has credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring him up. It's Moody McCarthy. Come on. Everybody. It's time for a big headliner. Got some funny, funny jokes to say. I'll do a 10 minute set headliner Man, I'm so glad that it's Thursday Yeah, 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 yeah Bring my party, everybody! Woo! Thank you, what an intro, thanks guys Thank you, Ben, a big hand for Brad and Steve and Carla A big hand for everybody here, huh? Right. Tell you, I'm so thr thrilled to be on the virtual comedy show Because I, I grew up watching this show, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, uh, 
Someday, someday I'm going to be on the virtual comedy show. Great to be with you. I'm coming from New York. This looks like a virtual backdrop. It is not. During the quarantine, you can rent a theater for 40 bucks. You know? And I go, let's, let's go all out here. Let's do it. Let's do it. So this is fun. So I hope everyone's well. I hope your last two years is quite cool. Hey, this thing is... Uh, the thing's starting to get to me. Me and my wife. Hey, let, I do a quick little poll. We can see some people here. If you just live with adults, give us a thumbs up. And if you have little kids in the house, smash your camera so we know what you've been dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got two little tykes here. And, um, you know, I found my uh, silver. I've, I've had to do a little bit of homeschooling. I'm in New York City now. My daughters are five and seven years old. They're in second grade and kindergarten. And they're going to school five days a week now. I don't know where you guys are. I think we have a lot of Midwesterners. Last year, my kids went to school in person half the time and then the other half remote. I don't know if anyone had a similar experience. But even last year, I brought them to school every day, you know. <laughs> And they go, hey, your cohort's tomorrow. I go, I, you know, we're on standby. I know, I know, we're on standby. <laughs> but there were a couple stretches where there was no school, and uh, so I became a, a homeschooler, a teacher. Mm -hmm. Turns out I'm incredible. I found my calling. The silver lining of this whole thing is that I'm an amazing homeschooler. My two little daughters, under my tutelage, are both now licensed realtors. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> They've already flipped their bedroom. They flipped their bedroom. Do you believe that? <laughs> this is a fun, this this is a fun Zoom show, by the way. It really truly is. These Zoom shows are funny because I'm sure everyone, you guys have been doing them for like close to two years. Early on, no one would mute their mic, so it was like a cacophony of noises, and people had like leaf blowers in their living rooms and everything like that. <laughs> You'd see like a Harley Davidson fat boy drive to the fridge. You're like, what is this? <laughs> and then people got too shy. Everyone, I do, I do like uh, work events, you know, and everyone got very shy. So I'm no lie. I've done shows where it was 40 people, 40 devices, every single camera and microphone off. <laughs> Just me in front wow. of me. Yeah, yeah, for like 40 minutes. It's me barking my dumb jokes into the camera right there. But I make I tell them I go I go I tell people don't worry about it I go um you know I know they're probably watching Ted Lasso I go hey I'm watching a great documentary on meerkats right now we're all having fun <laughs> we're all doing it <laughs> Maybe it can. but at this point at this point I think it's just fun just to be out of the the dining room and into the living room you know what I mean it's just good to be in another <laughs> part of it. <the> <laughs> But the quarantine gave me and my wife a glimpse of each other's jobs. That's what that's what uh, came down. And my wife, I have a deepened respect for her. She works super hard. She, I can't believe how hard she works. She's in meetings all day. I don't know if you guys are in meetings all day. I never worked in the corporate world, so I, you know, I assume they had like a twenty-minute meeting on Monday. No, all meetings all the time. I told my wife, I go, hon, it's like a. It's like I'm listening to a football game that's only a huddle. Don't you have to break and run a play? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I have a deepened respect for her. And she pretty quickly learned that I don't have a job. So that was kind of humbling, you know. <laughs> a little, little humbling. A little humbling when the entire universe sides with your spouse, who has always said I'm non-essential. She's always said that. <laughs> Yeah. She said that a decade ago. She goes, you're non-essential. I go, I don't know what you're talking about. She goes, just wait. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> and I'm more scared of her than ever. I'm always a little deferential to her, but now it's, you know, she's my barber. I don't know if anyone else is in that situation. <laughs> and uh, that's, some, that's another level of anxiety. Like anyone in, a, anyone in life, you've had your partner upset with you. That's part of it. That's part of life. I don't know if you've ever sat down to get a haircut from someone who was pissed off at you, though. That's a whole different level right there. You know? <laughs> so I don't turn around anymore. I just don't turn around because I, I think she's spelling words on the back. I think it says proud boy on the back of my head. I think that's what she <laughs> that she's shaving my neck. I don't think so. <laughs> But you guys are fun. I tell you what, early in the quarantine, too, I, all these people came out of the woods. Remember these people were like, uh, like, I got nothing to do. I'm home all day. I got nothing to do. I'm just uh, I'm making martinis. I'm watching everything on Netflix. I don't know about you. I was like, hey, hang on, man. That was my old life. That's what I just lost to COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm homeschooled. 
I'm homeschooling two dingbats now. It's, that's that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So I know Carla doesn't feel well. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here have had maybe had COVID. I, I had COVID myself a little while ago. And, uh, hey, man, they didn't tell me. I, uh, I don't know. Anyone else? I lost my taste in music. Did anyone else lose their taste in music? <laughs> <laughs> Carla and I did. Okay, yeah. I, I just been listening to uh, <laughs> to UB40 ever since I got COVID. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, did I burn a burn a couple bridges right there? <laughs> They're a karaoke band, you suckers! Come on! <laughs> I should have said Post Malone. I should have said Post Malone. Because <laughs> I'm hey, it's you know uh, Steve and Carla are musicians. I'm like a hobbyist on the guitar. So, but I love music. When when I, when I was like a teenager, I like. I was like, I'll, I know I'll fall out of touch with pop culture, but I'll never lose track of music. And now I don't know who, who anyone is. So, and I just, I'm stuck in the 80s. I just listen to 80s <laughs> rock, you know? So then uh, about once a year, I go, all right, I'm going to see who the top streaming person is, and I'm going to get up to speed on what's going on. And it's uh, Post Malone. So <laughs> I never heard of the guy. I pull up his picture. I go, good. You know, he's not a pretty boy. He must be here for the music, you know? I don't know. If, I don't know if you ever seen the fella. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's not a poster boy. And then I listened to some of him. He drove me back into the fifties. Now, now I'm just listening to Benny Goodman. He, he chased me the other way. <laughs> but things are going. We're doing all right here. So I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm in New York City. I'm not from here. I, I moved here. I moved to New York City because this city has so much energy. And then I learned the city gets its energy. By sucking it out of the people that live here, <laughs> I just want, I want to be on a farm at this point. I want to get out of here. <laughs> but hey, which, so the year it's, everything's great. The weather is crazy. I think most people are in the Midwest. You guys are having some crazy weather. We got like a hurricane in New York. We got flooded. So a um, lot of stuff's going on. I don't do political jokes, but I think these days, uh, whether your state is red state or blue state, uh, refers to whether it's on fire. Or flooded. <laughs> here's here's my plan, because the whole East Coast we all get we're flooded, we're soggy over here. Whole West Coast is on fire. Here's my plan: if we could just jack up the entire East Coast of the continent, just raise it, all that water will flow to the West Coast and put out all the fires, right? Yeah. And people in the Midwest, you guys can catch salmon in your mouths. How exciting would that be? <laughs> 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 now I don't trust our leaders. I don't trust our leaders. Uh, this I think this is bipartisan because we just have very elderly leaders in this country now. Uh, all branches, all branches of government, very old. And I don't trust the elderly people to handle the climate because I don't know if you have elderly people in your life. They always want it three to four degrees warmer, no matter what. They want it warmer. Right? <laughs> And they complain. They complain that the beach is too far away. So I, I don't think they have our best interests. <laughs> right. yeah. But uh, my parents are. I got my parents are. Uh, they're great. I was. I saw my parents last weekend. Uh, my parents are 84 years old. They've been married 62 years, and uh, they met online. They met online. How about that, everybody? <laughs> Sorry, they met in line. In line. They met yeah. in line. <laughs> They met in line at their uh, school cafeteria. They're born, yeah. they're like storybook. They're born two weeks apart, met in kindergarten, high school sweethearts, had seven kids, 13 grandkids. But I'm worried about them because I don't, they won't move. They're in this big house. They live in a big house. You think they'd move to a ranch or assisted living. But every time I go home, I don't know if you've witnessed this, uh, they just have more grab bars up. Have you seen this move? <laughs> very, very, the whole house is grab bars at this point. Which has uh, made me realize I'm going to retire to a ballet studio. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'll take the mirrors down so I don't scare the heck out of myself. <laughs> but my father's mellowed out. So, we, uh, yeah, I'm one of seven kids. My father's warming up to us, which is kind of nice, you know. <laughs> we, drove, we drove the guy nuts because we had nine people in the house. We only had one bathroom. That did not help Ooh. tension. Mm -hmm. I know it. I say seven kids. People are like, yeah, I do. I knew family's way bigger than that. I go one bathroom. People go, oh my god, it's like Angela's ashes. What is going on? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we drove my father nuts, and it it got to him. We used to go on those field trips in school. We give our dad the permission slip. It's got that question in case of an emergency. My dad would write, "Do not resuscitate." <laughs> 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 so 
So, um, oh, Brad was talking about food and everything, the restaurants, uh, Bobby Flay. My wife, that's my, my wife is so disappointed in me. My wife is a foodie. She's very into restaurants and meals and everything. And I'm not, I just eat pizza every night. If I was left on my own, I just have pizza every night. <laughs> but my wife, once in a while, she'll go, all right, you're picking dinner. I go, first of all, she'll go, she goes, let's not get pizza. I go, hon, I'm willing to go to a different pizzeria. I'm very broad minded. <laughs> <laughs> but once in a while, she'll really press me. She'll go, all right. Uh, dinner is your call. No pizza. I go, okay. I try to get a little cultural. I go, oh, here we go. I go, hey, let's get some Thai food. And here's my wife. No, I can't have Thai food today. I had Thai food yesterday. I go, well, people in Thailand handle that pretty well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but the food inside the house is getting more exotic, much more exotic. Uh, we don't have rice anymore. My wife uh, banished rice, replaced it with quinoa. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, quinoa is good, too. Quinoa is good if you put it in something that was already good. <laughs> 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 no one's ever been eating some dish of food just going, uh, oh. it is a little bland, but I think a little quinoa would turn it around, though. <laughs> a little quinoa. I lost. Hey, by the way, I lost all track of time. I don't know what year it is. <laughs> I know I didn't. But I'm a huge sports fan. A lot going on now. Hey, now there's a lot of people. Um, I don't know if you're following the Australian Open. A lot of people are threatening to not watch the Australian Open who have never watched the Australian Open. <laughs> a lot of people come out and say, I'm not watching that tennis tournament that I've never watched in my life. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, the opposite reaction, because, you know, the number one player in the world, I'm sure everyone knows the story, uh, Djokovic, number one player, he's like an anti-vaxxer. He's a knucklehead. So he got in, and I had the opposite reaction. I go, ah, Jesus, now i got to watch the Australian Open. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to set the alarm for 3.30 in the morning every day. We'll watch the Australian Open. I'm actually a huge tennis fan. I love tennis. Um, the TV ratings for tennis, and no one watches tennis. The TV ratings are brutally low. Here's how they could get more viewers. Got to get rid of the ball boys and the ball girls, okay, and replace them with golden retrievers. That's what people want. <laughs> Goldens, they love tennis balls. Everyone loves Goldens. Win, win, win. Right there. <laughs> the chair umpire will be up there. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> it's a good girl. Good girl right there. Good girl. <laughs> but I like, uh, I'm a huge sports fan. So I've been following the pandemic kind of as a sports fan, which is kind of juvenile, but you can kind of gauge what's going on, right? Because um, my favorite sports basketball, and that's when it all kind of landed in my lap selfishly. Like it was, what was it, March 10th, 2020, a player in the NBA caught COVID. They go, we're not, but no more professional basketball. Like, oh man, that's my favorite sport. But we still got college basketball. And then like the next day, they're like, no college basketball. Like, oh man. And then every sport, they were like, no sports. And then like an hour later, they go, oh yeah, and Tom Hanks has COVID. I go, geez, Tom Hanks. I go, hey, can we start? with Mark Wahlberg and just start working our way up like you know, you know not because he's less likable he's, he's younger he's in incredible shape and he's less likable that's really the whole joke I'll be honest with you I'll be honest with you but they postponed the Olympics the Olympics were supposed to be last uh, 2020 and uh, they postponed them even though I felt like they could have had the fencing you, you know I don't know if you ever watched fencing they're built for these times they were built for these. They got hats and gloves and double layered. They're like beekeepers. And they're six feet apart. They're six feet apart anyways. Right? And uh, and they don't have any fans. So that one is over. Uh, oh. <laughs> so I'll leave. I lost. I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, I'll end on this. Yeah, they, re, they resumed playing sports with no fans. A lot of people were weirded out. A lot of people couldn't get over it. How are they going to play with no fans there? It didn't bother me at all. I, I ran cross country, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good, good. Let them see how it feels. That's how I thought. Good. <laughs> see how it feels to train hard and have nobody show up to watch. <laughs> hey, this has been fun hanging out. So I, I, I have no idea. I think I did an hour 20 there. I have no <laughs> idea. Great. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh. Hey, uh, I'll be selling my CD in my backyard. I'll be out in the backyard if anyone. Yeah. Get on Google Maps.
this show knows what it's like to not have any fans either. So it's just really uh, <laughs> nice to do. By the I will say this. So uh, have you done, have you been doing in the last two years a ton of Zoom shows? Have you? Yes, I have. Yeah. 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 I've been, I've been doing this since 2005. And uh, I have. No, I'm not kidding. Really? Uh, really? I got my wow. first, well, I'm on a system because I also do educational stuff. I oh, did a yeah, show yeah. today. I did a program today. They not only had no cameras and mics at all. There were no cameras and mics. All I wow. had was they could write questions as I did stuff into the chat, but they couldn't see each other's chat, and I didn't chat back to them. That's all. So I had to just talk and have no responses whatsoever, except when they would type in that I could read. I mean, that's that's how far was, it Was this on me. a ham radio? Was it ham yeah. radio and <laughs> telegraph? No, it was Morris Code. It was just, <laughs> I was doing no shows with the Morris Code. Yes. So. Oh, oh. But, man, that was fantastic. Let's hear it again. Let's Thank hear it again. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Apologies to all the comics I bumped. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is – now, let's admit it. This is a place where people have learned to do virtual comedy – like Carol, you know Carol Montgomery? Yeah, she's great. Carol Montgomery would never do, she hated it, Zoom. She did this show. A week later, she's got seven shows online. I mean, it was wow. just like uh, Jeff yeah. Shaw. Jeff Shaw refused to do anything on video until he started doing this show. And now he's done a ton. Because I think if nothing else, we do have the greatest audience people we in do. the world. Let's oh, yeah, people yeah, yeah. Come to the show yeah. and laugh. So. Our yes. virtual audience yeah. really enjoys our virtual comedy. <laughs> and, and it's a laugh track. Those aren't real people. It's a no. laugh track. <laughs> all, all, all those devices are in your house, I can tell. That's right. And those are all, like the audience in sports, they're all cardboard cutouts that you're seeing right now. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen, see, Ellen is a hand that we move up like this. So, mine, Alice, is and especially... Fun? Eric, seeing up his shirt like that is, is a plan. So, all right, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Okay. Because, uh, uh, Moody, you're going to love what's next. Steve, we all know what's next. Uh, what is it? It's there. <laughs> it's time for a Patty Melt. With Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases. The folks refusing to wear masks says. And politicians getting caught grabbing ass says. She's melting <laughs> down. It's a Patty Vasquez. Patty Melt. Here comes Patty. <laughs> Happy Pizza Week. It's oh, National oh. Pizza Week. I'm so excited. And by the way, I mean, the, the conservatives do not own the flag. We just can put a pizza on it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have a little something different today because I have been going through a lot of my old posts on Facebook. And it turns out I've written a lot of essays over the years. So you guys think I just come here and melt, but I used to just melt on Facebook. And, uh, and I wrote a lot, of, a lot of posts that were too long, didn't read, uh, which is what I learned when I Googled what does TLDR mean. Um, <laughs> And I found some great, so a couple of you know this, I, I posted this on my Facebook page, and if you want to see this letter, a listener wrote back in 2016 when I was at WGN Radio, uh, it's, uh, she was complaining about how uh, we were commenting on the fact that I, I have the broadcaster's record for saying penis the most times on a broadcast. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Woo! And uh, she wanted to know if my mother, if I was proud of myself, and did I tell my boys that story? And yes, I do. Um, well, they're also sixteen and eighteen now. So, but I, I was just, I, it wasn't actually my idea. It was my producer's idea. We were, we had a show on Sunday nights, and at midnight, I did something called the Midnight Tease, and we would talk about politics and sex and gender and all these things. And so he came up with this idea to to say penis more than anybody else had, because whenever we would say that word, people would complain. Plane, so we decided to lean into it. Um, <laughs> so I didn't just like say it uh, willy nilly. Oh, see what I did there? Um, <laughs> now I'm going to change your name. There you go. So here, here was this sort of list we had. If you go to my Facebook page, you can see the uh, the angry letter that she wrote and misspelled trailer, asking if I lived in trailer park. <laughs> she said, misspelled trailer. Anyway, so here, so what we did was uh, I read emergency room 
uh, reports on the air that involved penises. So we were able to compile over 60 reports <laughs> from all over the country in 2016. And, you know, if you've never had to fill like, if you ever seen your emergency room reports, like I'll give you one that maybe I had was uh, hanging theater lights, electrocute itself. So <laughs> true story. <laughs> So here's uh here's so some here's some of the like the for example was moving Christmas decorations and fell down a flight of ten steps straddling the post of the banister. Oh, oh. In penis. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Put padlock on penis with no key and unable to remove it. Lock, <laughs> <laughs> lock removed by locksmith. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Did we have kids watching tonight? Because I can stop. I gotta say, Will. Go ahead. Don't worry about it now. <laughs> Put a shower curtain ring on his penis, and now can't get it off. <laughs> I have to. Was do you think it was one of those metal ones with like the anyway? <laughs> Try to cut penis off with trauma shears in his sleep. Now we've talked Ooh. about. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it was like in the nightstand the trauma shears do you think i mean <laughs> yeah. sleeps in the shed it's part of a medicine cabinet item isn't it yeah i'm sorry washed his genitals with industrial laundry laundry inter detergent <laughs> I mean, how dirty do you have to feel about yourself? I, I have to stop laughing at these. I'm, I'm sorry. I, was, I should I should have pre-read these. Crashed bike. Bike is missing the seat and has only the metal bar. <gasps> Fell onto metal bar during crash. But I still mm. wonder. Do you wonder like me? Was he wearing a helmet? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no, I don't think anybody here has ever did this growing up, right, guys? Uh, was using measuring tape. And it snapped back. <laughs> I use a ruler. <laughs> it's safer. It's safer. Um, no, so, you're good. And by the way, I so I, I just in in closing, there's so many more. I'm not going to hold the record for this show. Um, when you I, I hold the record for you this already show. have it. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to break it next week. Um, uh, in, so a friend of mine, a really close friend of mine passed away in 2010. And I, if you ever see my page, you'll see a lot of what I call selfish selfies, where I started taking pictures of everyone. Cause I'm like, I had no pictures of my friend, Chris. Um, so I have a photo and this part of this is in tribute to Bob Saget, but all you can see oh. here is his nose and glasses. Oh. Um, Cause I don't know how to edit this to get that oh. better wherever he is. Um, I have to say he was incredibly sweet. Uh, so generous. And you're right, Brad. He was beloved by everybody. So my penis list is in tribute to Mr. Bob Saget. Uh, <laughs> that's how he would have wanted uh, it. I'm saying. Hey, hey, wait, where are you going? I don't know. Every time. Bring Patty talking, back in. I'm bringing Patty. Her back. <laughs> bring her back in. Hi, Patty. Hi. Oh, that was so sweet. Hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, who keeps the uh, tally whacker list? Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there are some kind uh, journalists out there. This one was from this. This is actually from 2021. So this is wow. Cosmopolitan had this 20. So my producer at the time went through and there were different places. So I, I might I might try to find out if there's a compilation somewhere because they are kind of fun to read. Well, so I think yeah. it's really smart to wait till we had a show with a hundred year old audience member before you did that. That's right, a hundred and one hey, year old audience member. I did this list on WGN radio at five o'clock in the evening during Christmas holidays. So you did. Uh, where are you Thank working you. now? WCCC 828. <laughs> well, when you do the list there, you'll find your next stage. Oh, I said limp. I said, I can't say it, but I said limp. Uh, so one of our guys during the day was talking about one of the side effects because uh, people were complaining about the side effects of the vaccinations. And he said, he said, well, you know, COVID can give you limp member. And he said like, the other word. I, okay, I don't know what your limp what? what? Limp, limp what? What would you not want to have? A limp dip. See? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can say you can, you can say it. All right. Anyway, you can say it. Rich is <laughs> say that. 
I don't want to have it, but you can say it. I can say <laughs> so, it. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to take Brad out of this meeting while he finds his ruler. <laughs> Wait, uh, yes. Go ahead, Patty. Go no, ahead. No, I don't need my ruler. I've already done all that. I've already done it. As a matter of fact, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm way over peak, so now it would just be sad. I had to do back in the days when you know I was younger and more powerful. Now, uh, now I'm just limp, whatever she said. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the point of the show, as Patty and Steven here, when I ask everyone to go to virtual comedy show dot com and click donate to the comedians first of all because i need viagra it seems uh, also we're going to give money to patty to bump up that penis list and it seems that moody mccarthy needs to move out of new york city and find better tutors for his children so uh if you get a chance and steve i forgot what the hell you oh and steve needs to get uh half a top 10 list to be better i guess so anyway as he said so please if you get a chance please go to virtualcomedyshow.com and click donate to the comedians and we give the money to the comics unless it's too much and then i just keep it but uh <laughs> it's a small amount i give to the comics and we got to pay these guys behind me because uh, that guy needs a hair a hair piece uh, so if you get a chance, please, for heaven's <laughs> sakes, do that. Cause we do have a fun show. We do well. And this is our 89th show next week. We're going to talk about our 90th show and what we're going to do for our 100th show in honor of our guest tonight, who is 100 years old, everybody. Yeah. So I think that is fantastic. Uh, so please stick with us for the next 10 weeks. Cause we're going to have prizes, giveaways, and our hundredth show is going to be an incredible deal. Steve, do you have anything you want to say about it before we go? Yes. I want to say that uh, while we've been chatting, our good friend Janice sent me a Google page that says, uh, the cheese was generally made in cottages from milk left over after making butter. That's why it's called cottage cheese. Oh, all right. Ooh. Instead of paying attention to this show, they did that. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this show has been fantastic. Steve, I think we're just down to the worst joke of the week. Let's do the and worst then say goodnight. The worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Worst joke. Was the worst joke ever uh, by the way the worst joke this week is sad news jason momoa who played aquaman age 42 and different world star lisa bonet age 54 are divorcing did y'all hear that let me oh, let me pull no. up so i can see everybody i know that's that's that, that's really terrible i want to I, I i'm sorry this will take a long time but i want to move this over and see people's faces here uh, did y'all see that? Let's who who's no, seen that. And I, I apologize if I'm yes. giving you that news because I really, uh, I really sad. Moana, uh, Moana, <laughs> Moana, Moana, Momoa told his mom when he was eight years old that he was going to marry Bonet someday as he watched her on TV. I mean, that is just mm. it's amazing. I thought their love would last forever, uh, and I thought it would win out. So I guess it's never going to happen for me and Ginger. Have a very merry Thursday It's a special time of week When Thursday bells are peeling And life no longer seems so bleak Let's open up our presents And carve our Thursday goose And wait for Father Thursday To arrive upon his moose you know, we tried to incorporate all the wonderful family traditions that people associate with Thursday. Thursday comes but once a week, but do not shed a tear. Because there are more than 50 Thursdays packed in every year. And every single one of them is full of mirth and glee. So stuff your face and break some wind and join the reverie. Have a very merry Thursday. Put on your orange fez and decorate the Thursday tree with milk, bone, spam, and pez. Once you've curled your mustache and donned your Thursday clothes, I'll catch you neath the mistletoe and punch you in the nose. Merry Thursday!